All right, the property prequel, be in the know before you buy. This week, got an uh, epic guest, which I'll re- reveal in a second. But uh, as always, just want to show gratitude and love. Obviously, um, the show continues to uh, get epic feedback and really appreciate all the messages every single week. People sharing on their stories and sending me little DMs saying, hey, love this. I've got some key takeaways. That's what it's all about. And if you want to share the love, any key takeaways you get, make sure you share it to someone because that's the whole point. It's creating a better community of, of buyers, um, adding value so everyone feels a bit more supported. So that's what the show is all about. We don't get paid to do that. It's simply to add value. And for today's app, I'm sure this is going to be jam-packed, full of value. I've been really keen to dive into the head of, of this guest, um, doing some great things on the Gold Coast in particular. Um, you'll know his business 100%, but... If you don't, I'd love to introduce. Uh, so we got Nick McDonald, who's the founder of MacTech Constructions. I'm sure um, people just call him MacTech, I think. I, th- I thought that just was your name that. for a while, yeah. MacTech. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, he also is the, I guess, holds the uh, award for Queensland House of the Year and Australia's Villa of the Year as well. So I just put that in context. Obviously, you've heard of Mac Tech Construction, but to give you context, we're talking to uh, a bit of a big dog today and, and keen <laughs> to dive into the mind of someone who is part of some of the best houses in Australia. So we get an idea on what makes it tick, uh, lessons learned, but also where did this journey start? So Nick McDonald, Mac Tech, how are you, bro? Good, thanks. How are you? Man, thank good, good, mate. Thanks for popping in. I was really keen to um, always see you around the the hood in in the Gold Coast and doing some great things. I guess firstly, mate, um, we we're just chatting off air. You, it, it's funny when you when you chat to some people who are doing really well, you sort of always forget everyone's everyone's just a normal normal sort of person. And yeah. I, was, I was just chatting to you. You're a local Gold Coaster, are you? Yeah, born and bred. Born and bred. Yeah. Little surf surf girl. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's and, what it was all about. And so. Born and bred Gold Coast, and then so what was what was school life like for you? Like, did you always have the the what was that class you did in woodwork and all that? Were you were you one of those fellas? Uh, look, I wasn't. Like, all I wanted to do was surf yeah. when I went through school. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really interested in much else. Um, yeah, went to um, yeah PBC uh, for high school, and and yeah, was in sports excellence for surfing there. And oh, true. Um, yeah, and then pretty much yeah, it's. All, all uh, are really consistent. Of really just, just surf, surf just surfing, bummed and out, bummed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always love giving a, a bit of background because a lot of the guests we've had on here who are doing big things, a lot of it has been just like the everyday, everyday battlers. But yeah. we'll, we'll tap into where the drive and where the motivation come from in a second. But I always love to give context on where it kind of started and the background there. So, Gold Coast, just a little, a little surf grom. So, go to uni, anything like nah. that? No. Nah. No. no, I left in year 11. Oh, so oh, maybe like three, four months into it. High school dropout. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, love I, um, it. The surf was, once again, the surf, surf was good for about a month straight at Kira. And uh, just, I went back to school and I was just too much to catch up on. I was just like, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. done. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. And then where did, so what I'm assuming then, did you jump into like a trade or? Oh, honestly, I didn't. I didn't. Do my car, start my carpentry trade till I was about 22, 23. So, what did you so do just, from like 16 to bummed out? Did you? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah, did I you... just, I, uh, oh, I just worked just random jobs. Um, I, I actually went, um, mum got sick of me being a bum. And so she you know, took me around to building sites pretty much and, <laughs> um, and just said, walk in and just try and get a job. You need to do something. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, well, I went into this one and they said, oh, labourer didn't turn up today. You know, do you want to jump in and do some labour? And I said, yeah, and did that. And then uh, I did about a week and then he's like, oh, you know, do you want to do an apprenticeship? And I was like, oh, no, nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you know? And then went back to just surfing and whatever. And, no and, way. and I mean, it's one thing that I look back and I'm like, you know, if I did start then, you know, how much further it'd be. But you look at sort of like probably the reasons why you got to, you know, the reasons why you are where you are now is, you know, if I did start then, you know, I might've burned out, got over it, yeah. jumped into something else. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of, you know, I'm sort of firm believer of, you know, what happens happens and yeah. sort of go with it. Mm. Yeah. So what I'm really trying to, mate, I, I love that. Cause we, I actually didn't know any of that. That's why I like <laughs> to keep it raw. So for people who are seeing Mac tech, like construction, the founder, so not just a business owner, like a founder of quite a solid business over a decade in the game now, 
uh, like the builder of Queensland House of the Year, Australia's Villa <laughs> of the Year, like just rewind all the way back that, um, uh, yeah, like a high school dropout, just the, just cruising, doing yeah. doing your thing. So I'm, re- I'm really keen to talk around the next journey, but where did it, where did it kind of, I don't know, where did that kind of little bit Transition start on the, the yeah, where, yeah. What, so you're bumming around, just, uh, just cruising. Yeah, just different job after job sort of thing and and um so around age 20 or something was it yeah like yeah probably um yeah early 20 yeah 21 ish something like that um i guess sort of got to the point where i was like you know i've i'd always sort of you know had i guess um you know an eye for sort of you know creating things and whatever um and then, but yeah, I sort of, I guess, sort of started gaining some drive and sort of, you know, mm. just sort of, you know, wanted to do something and, um, and then, uh, yeah. So then my, um, auntie, I think at the time maybe yep. worked in a recruitment agency or something and she yeah, ended okay. up getting me, putting me into like a TAFE course for, a, um, like a pre carpentry apprenticeship sort of thing. Yeah. And, um, and then did that and worked with a guy for, um, and then ended up getting an apprenticeship with a guy just slapping frames up and, um, and, but yeah, it was just kind of, it was just boring. Even though I was an apprentice, it was kind of boring. And, yeah. um, but you know, I sort of wanted to do something more. And then I ended up getting a few cashies, I think as a first year apprentice doing a deck and, um, and a guy and, and it was all, all that work was kind of, you know, up, um, uh, like Coomer and up yeah. that sort of end. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I ended up getting a, uh, do, having this little cashie doing this deck on a weekend and, um, and there was a builder doing a job next door and and uh, a local palmy guy and uh and yeah hit me up and said you know what do you, and and we got talking and i said oh i'm just a first year apprentice and he was like oh do you want to do your apprenticeship with me and you know at that time he was sort of he was doing renos and just working yeah. on heaps of different different things and so yeah i jumped on with him and finished my apprenticeship with him uh for the yeah next three years yeah, yeah. um and then i yeah i guess that's kind of where i got to the point of yeah getting my trade yeah really yeah proper so I guess this is a good one. What What's just, I always love to get a little key takeaway. I guess I, I just picked up something there. What would be your advice, right, to that teen, like the finished school um, or early 20s, you know, and this is a lot of, lot of not just males, but males and females. Um, they're just cruising and yeah. they know they're capable of a lot more in life, but they're, they're just, I don't know, they're, they're just kind of cruising. Like what, what would be your advice? there to anyone listening right now who's literally in that place i guess i guess you want to have experienced all the things you think you want to experience you know before you sort of jump in and think you have to do it all mm. um you know and you think you have to do something to create a life you know what i mean True. it's, it's kind of a good point um you know i just figured what happens happens what comes to you will come to you um you know at the right time yeah um uh but you know i guess i guess what comes with it is, you know, the drive that you're going to need to do it. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it sort of, it went from one extreme to the other sort of, you know, went from, from, you know, cruising and doing that thing, but because I'd done it and I was kind of like, Oh, I've done it. You know, done it's, it. it's, yeah. you know, it's experienced yeah. it. You know, if you jumped True. into something straight away, you'd be like, Oh, it'd be nice to cruise for a just while. You know what I mean? But True. so you That's don't want to point. sort of split it up. It's sort of, you'd good to just get it out of the way early. Um, do what you think you want to do, try some different things, whatever you need to do. And then, yeah, when, once you sort of find something that you like and you're passionate about, just, put everything into it sort of you know it went mm. from me you know i guess bumming around to to sort of working weekends big hours just you know really getting into it and mm. enjoying enjoying it as well mate it's a really good tip there because i can definitely relate like even as a i used to play professional sport and like you come straight out of school and then you're on and then you and then you you do eh? you, you i got to sort of when i retired and a lot of players any athlete goes through it it's like you just you just got to try a few different things or yeah. just, man, it'd be cool to just cruise for a little bit and just yeah. find my feet and where yeah. I'm kind of going. Just Next. get out of your system. You know, the whole grass yeah. isn't greener, you know, yeah. you've tried it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I don't need to do it. But, you know, when you start something, you know, it's a long journey. So mm. it's sort of, you know, you want to lock in for the long haul sort of thing yeah. to, you know, get where you want to get. Mm. 100%. So you, you're getting this um, apprenticeship done. Mate, what was the biggest thing you learnt doing an apprenticeship? Uh, I mean, my... I got pretty lucky with my apprenticeship, I think, in the way that my boss just threw me in the deep end. He was just Love like, that. just, yep. there you go. I'll be back later. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'm just like, the fuck do I do? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, and just had to work it out. <laughs> yeah, really? And um, and I think that built a lot of um, a lot of the skill required sort of yes. for late, for at this time, yep. I guess. Bit of problem solving. Um, and Lots, I mean, that's 
all pretty much a builder is now. It's just it's just yep. just problem solved, put fires out. Yeah, it's just, yeah, true. Um, um, yeah, so that's sort of the biggest thing I took away from my apprenticeship with with the second guy that I finished it with. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I was going to say, Nick, what about that? Because like I'm just getting a bit of background. Like you're just bumming around, right? And then you're thrown in the deep end. What I, I feel a lot, a lot of cruisers would have just been like, nah, bro, this is, <laughs> this is come on, man, I'm out. Like, yeah. what made you stay? Like, knowing what you told me just a second ago, I would have assumed you would have been like, I'm not, yeah, I'm out. I think it sort of just came with like, like it's kind of like you're owning something. Like it's it, it, as well yeah. as throwing me in the deep end. You guys kind of like it's like it's that's your job. You yeah. know what I mean? So like you found it's kind a bit of, of purpose. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of I think it was just like you know, what do I have to do to make this happen? Or like, you know, it was sort of a case of, of, I guess I started looking at it as though like the finished job. Yeah. It's like, you know, if I can create that. So I sort of like, you know, looked at, took all those little pieces, you know, of doing that job that day to be like, that's going to create that sort of thing. And, and I guess it's just, you know, everyone's different. Um, you know, I just, I guess that was sort of just my thing that, um, you know, how I looked at it, I guess. Yeah. 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 And then mate, where did, yeah. Okay. You finish your apprenticeship and then, did you continue to work for this guy or you, you ended up um, doing something else? No, nah, pretty much, yeah. I went out with a with a mate and just did some subcontracting to try and, you know, make a quick bit of money um, for a couple of years. Oh, no, maybe it was about a year actually. Mm, yeah. Um, and then uh, got to the point, oh, what happened there? And then pretty much, um, but once again, it was back to the same. I went off, started my pressure. I was putting frames up and I was like, you know, this isn't isn't mm, for me. It was yeah. just, it was just, it's just, there's or a slab, put a frame up, that's it. Yeah, yeah not yeah. stimulating it at all. And I think that's where, you know, I was enjoying the apprenticeship because we we're doing, working yeah. on just different stuff every day. Yeah. I mean, we were doing it all, you know, we were pouring footings, we yeah. were putting roof sheeting on, you know, it wasn't yeah. just carpentry. It was more, it was, was more of a building apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, so pretty much, I guess, from that point, um, we did about a year and then um, our, uh, my parents had sold the house and we got an opportunity to, um, jump in with them on, uh, like just building a family house. Um, my parents, me and my sister, yeah. so we sort of all, all chucked in and got this place out Crumman Valley. Yeah. And, um, and then I signed up at that point, I signed up my brother as an apprentice. Um, and pretty much, yeah, it was just me and him just built the whole house really? from scratch Jesus. sort of thing. Did it, you know, we're doing every, I mean, you know, bar obviously electrical plumbing yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah. can't yeah. do, but yeah. you know, everything else. Wow. Um, and yeah, I guess from that, that was probably the turning point from where it sort of, I guess, MacTech was created. Um, I, I mean, not by, um, I mean, just, I was nearly by luck, I guess, or fluke, or maybe it was just an early point. It would have happened later. Who knows? Yeah. But you know, the, me and my brother were working dark till dark, yeah. seven days a week out yeah. there just to get it done. And yeah, it was exciting too, because it was our own, you know, first yeah. own sort of thing yeah, that we yeah, sort yeah. of had. And, um, and a guy, yeah, used to walk his dogs out there every day and was, you know, would, would, like every day and, um, and about probably three quarters of the way of the build, he came up to us and said, Oh, I've got a little house in Crumbin, you know, that would you guys build? And I was like, oh, I don't have my builder's license. Cause we we're just going to own a builder at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, And uh, it was like, Oh, why don't you get it? And so I was like, Oh, you're all right. Oh, you know, I'll go, go look into it. And then, um, and then, so found like a fast tracked, um, builder's course to do and, and, uh, and in the midst of sort of doing that, the neighbors that bought the block next door, cause it was yep. sort of a, you know, a little, a, a new estate thing out there. And, uh, and then, you know, they hit me up and they're like, oh, can you, you know, can you build our house? And I was like, oh, I don't have my builder's license. And they were just go, I'll oh, just go own a builder. You know, we'll go own a builder and you can just build it for us. And then, so I sort of started doing that. And then in the meantime, this guy's little shack in Crumb yeah. turned out to be a house on the hill, you know, on, yeah. on um, you know, near Woodgie Street there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, which was beyond anything that I could have thought that I was you know, capable yeah, of doing. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but I guess in the midst of that, you know, he, um, you know, it comes, you know, I guess a little bit of luck would come down and come with it. Um, but yeah, he was sort of at the architect's office and there's another client in there before I'd built his house yet. And um, these guys are like, oh, we don't know who to build our house. And, and you know, he's like, I'll oh, use this guy. And, you know, <laughs> this, this is who I'm using. And and because his house is, you know, better than theirs, yeah. they're just like, they didn't even ask to see anything I'd done. I'm like, well, yeah. I've done nothing. Yeah, you know? yeah. Wow. And, um, and admittedly, I quote it. And I know that I was a hell of a lot cheaper than everyone yeah. else. You know yeah. what I mean? And, um, yeah. and, you know, and then so all of a sudden, then I had, you know, their house, which was a substantial house at the time. Yeah. And I had, uh, and then I ended up finishing this guy that we used to walk his dog's house. Yeah. Um, and so I had sort of two jobs straight up on the portfolio. Wow. And that was kind of, you know, a good, that was sort of the starting point, I guess. To, wow. Yeah. That's unreal. And then, so 
then you launch, you got the uh, company set up. Yeah, that, was so it? pretty yeah. much. Yeah, like once I'd sort of built the house next door for the neighbours. Yep. Um, in that time, I think I think I was fast tracked it maybe like six, eight months or something. Yeah. Yep. Um, and um, and then yeah, from that point, I sort of got Mac Tech to yeah put do the. Um, those two people's yep. houses, and then that's yeah, that's pretty much that's where started. started. Back to, yeah, oh, mate, that is, I, I love that. Yeah, old mate walking his dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the right place, right time. And, I is... mean, yeah, he he did say like, you know, I've seen his working from dark to dark, and he's Unreal. like, you know, the one so he noticed the, the work and, ethic yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and obviously, must have, like the product must have looked all right on the the house, was it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, I, I think it was like, I mean, we were like, because it was. You know, I guess the heart was in it because it was yes. for our, you know, yep. own family house and stuff, and and yeah, I think that sort of all reflected in it. Um, but it's a massive learning curve. Like you know, I hadn't built a brand new house before. Yeah. It was kind of like, and and to this day, every every job you learn something. There's just yep. so much to learn in construction. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, like I mean, when I look back, you know, twelve years ago or, or something at the start, and I look at some of the things I did. I was like, fuck, I don't know how. Yeah, I how got you got through, through that, that or, you know, yeah. or how that worked. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, wow. I love that. Just sort of cruising, doing your own family home, a mm. few clients on the book, start a company. Yeah. Fuck, that's unreal. I love that. So then, all right, you're pumping a few, you got a little little portfolio now. Yeah. Like you, mm. you sort of go on there. Did you end up building like a like a team or was it just you and your brother or like, um, or were you was, just subcontracting all different my, people? No, nah, it was me and my brother. And then, um, and he was at that time still in his apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, and then I think yeah, I had ended up getting two two more guys on. Mm. Um, and then yeah, I guess over the next few years it was sort of like you know depending on work we had on, I could yep. pull a few guys in yep. and and whatnot yep. to to do it. Yeah. How how much did you have a say in like design and stuff, or did they always come in with design? Or yeah, at the start, yeah, we didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, uh, we just got given what yep. we yep. you know had and, build and, it. and anything, yep. and you know, and it was I was still fresh, like yep. you know, I didn't know what. Was yeah. meant to look good or yeah, not? Or, you know, yeah. so it's kind of it's just a, it evolved into yeah, wow. Yeah, that's unreal, man. I, I love that because there's, I know there'd be a lot of tradies sitting here right now thinking they're not capable of, you know, someone like yourself where you're at now. Um, oh, I think it, anyone's yeah, okay. like you know, it's just anyone can do it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, that's gotta, that's what yeah. I was going to ask you. But where's that? Was there a bit of self belief in you, yourself? Because uh, as I said, it probably didn't sound like during school uh, you were just kind of yeah. bumming. But did it turn into like, all right, I've, I'm onto something here? Well, I just like, don't think I ever looked really too much into the future. I was mm, kind of like at the time, at the start, the I was just kind of in the moment. I was like, just this one job. I'm like, yeah. this job's sick. I'm so excited. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was, um, it was just a bit of, you know, because I was, you know, was bumming around and hadn't really done anything for yeah. myself. I was like, you know, I'm creating this, yeah, this kind of Seems project. Like you found a fair bit of purpose like you yeah yeah and that sort of triggered motivation i'm i'm assuming yeah then. yeah and and you know i think the motivation grew because it was kind of like you know the, the next one i'm like oh, i just want to do a bit bigger job or yeah. you know what i mean it was always there's always something i was trying to get and yeah um you know i guess probably one downside looking back on it is like not celebrating the little wins yeah it's kind of like just it's kept... kind of get there and like see the next thing and move to that true but you know if you know i guess any advice I guess I could give would be just celebrate the things along the way. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, eh? Because like construction, hey, like it, it's a process, and you yeah. get an outcome at the end. But then, yeah. mm -hmm. like a lot of reputable builders, there's all, they're always looking to fill the pipeline with new projects, bigger, yeah. better. Yeah, but you sort of forget, eh? Like yeah. some of those projects, especially those early on ones for you, yeah. eh? Would have and it's enjoying, like, lots of yeah. enjoying. You know, I love love doing it. And, yeah, you know, it's kind of and I guess you know in construction too, there's lots of little milestones along the way yeah, that you know definitely. you're like, oh, I just can't wait to get to that stage. Yeah, and it's not like looking at the end and going, oh, it's yeah, two years down the track. And, yeah, and sort of yeah, so it keeps you motivated along the way, and, and everything's so different and unique that you know it keeps you excited. Yeah, and, yeah, mate, love it. And then okay, that that's unreal. I love I love that. So. You start actually firstly on again a, bu a bum from school school high school dropout. How did you find owning a business? Oh, I still to this day don't know how. Like was, <laughs> I definitely don't run my business how you should. Like I was just it's just self taught. You yeah, know what I mean. And some people come crack. in, they're just like, "What do you do? Like, what yeah. do you, how do you even do that?" And yeah. I'm just like, "I don't know. It's just what it's just how I've done it. I've uh, always done it." But was yeah, there ever so fear? Was there a fear starting your own business? Like, did you ever think oh. I'd, I'd rather just work for someone or? I just kind of figured like, you know, I sort of came from nothing. I'm like, something happens, nothing I'm back to, to nothing. Yeah. So like, you know, I know how to live with nothing. So, you know, whatever. Oh, man, I love, a key takeaway there is I guess it's, um, 
Yeah, not not no fear. It's kind of like um, act as if there's nothing to lose. Like you yeah. got you got nothing to lose, yeah. really. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even even if you did have like you come from something where at the end of the day, really, hey, I think about it, you don't really have anything to lose. Yeah, like you got everything to gain, and like just for anyone listening there, like you could have made the decision that you know stayed comfortable. Yeah. But you leaned into like the uncertainty and just, yeah. man, what do I got to lose? And now look where you are now and continue to go. That's come from those moments. Yeah. Of, yeah I mean, I look back in. too and just look at those points where I'm like, fuck, that was actually really risky. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. I didn't think it was at the time. I just did it and it yeah. happened and, you know, so. <laughs> oh, I love that. One of my favorites is like um, sometimes the most naive or the most successful because yeah. <laughs> they just don't, <laughs> they don't know what they're, they're in for. Yeah. Right? Like sometimes yeah. you overthink and you, you might have heard the term analysis paralysis yeah and that holds a lot of people back i reckon yeah 100%. so sometimes just being naive and young yeah is kind of where it's at and yeah. just having a hunger so i just think if you you know if you, it's everything's doable mm. if you want to do it you'll do it yeah you make it happen yeah. eh? mate where did it start to really snowball like what year in business did you really start so you're doing a few products um was there a point or a year where it was like, or, or a project that you think was a sliding door moment for your career? I think it's just been gradual. Yeah. Like everything feels like it has been, you know, it's kind of like you look at a, a project or something you did and you're like, oh, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have got that. And yeah. that led to that. And it's just, it, I just feel like it's just a accumulation of just everything to get to that point. Yes. Um, just in small amounts kind of thing. It's, yeah, yeah. it's, um, I mean, it, it definitely the last few years feels like it's definitely, um, I guess, sort of picked the pace up a bit. And, mm. uh, you know, when we started sort of doing a lot of our own stuff. Yeah. Um, just it's sort of rather than creating for other people, it's starting to create for yourself. And it's kind of like, yeah, changed, changed, changed it a lot for mm. us. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, reputation seems like a big one as well. Like, again, I, I always feel brand is something what, what people are saying when – you're not around, like you can't hear them. And yeah. as I said, we, we never met really b before, but I, I know I've, I've known Mac, Mac tech for, <laughs> for a while. Right. Yeah. And it, it's just kind of like, you just kind of see the brand out and about and you hear, hear good things. So was that ever an intention for you? Like the brand you're holding or the Mac tech um, name and what you're doing? I think so. Like I think from earlier on, I did see that, you know, brand was a big thing and, you know, I've always, you know, wanted to have branding on fences and, you know, yeah. just everything. Yeah. I think just brand awareness is big. 100%. Um, you know, the it was pretty early on that I realised that, you know, there's so many horror stories in the construction industry, you know, from both sides. But, you know, I guess, you know, we're trying to, you know, comfort clients to, you know, through the process and stuff. And, you know, and, and everyone knows someone that's had a horrible experience with yeah. a builder. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's just a case of, you know, a lot of our stuff's always been word of mouth uh, yeah. from past clients and someone they know and everything. Awesome. Um, and which is good because we know who we're getting as well, which it's sort of later in the piece, like lately that's sort of what it's turned into is sort of like nearly vetting our clients rather than them vetting us as yeah. well, uh, which is a, you know, great point to get to, mm. um, you know, because – because you can, you know, we've had it before, like, you know, that you can just have a block where it's just like you have great clients and everything's great. It's all, you know, you're happy with everything. But then you can just have, it can just take a couple of clients that, you know, mm. just make it sort of, you know, very difficult. Mm. Um, but you just got to push through, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's just, you know, it's just only for a project and yeah. just learn from it. And yeah. yeah. What about in terms of the, um, all right, so business is starting to go all right now. Um starting to get a bit of reputation more word of mouth stuff and mate, yeah. it's good like organic is the, the strongest form of marketing right where did it where did it come to the point where you're like doing client work then you started thinking all right maybe i can do this for my myself yeah um yeah well, like i guess it always felt like you know everything that you haven't done always seems unachievable but you know yeah. when you get to the point of doing it it's kind of, you realize oh, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that hard. So, mm. um, you know, I guess I sort of got to the point where I was like, you know, wanted to do our own stuff, but I was like, you know, we're going to have to start small, you know, yeah. cause we don't have the funding for it yeah. and, and, you know, backing for it. Um, but you know, it was, it was kind of hard to scale things down cause they're so used to doing all these epic jobs for mm. people and, you know, everyone's spending a fortune on stuff. So mm. it's all really high end. Um, so we kind of just sucked it up and and found somewhere in between where we're still, you know, it wasn't, you know, we weren't, didn't have a massive budget for yep. things, but we're still putting good things in it just yep. to sort of, I guess, and that's, um, I guess, not by design, but kind of just happened where 
we sort of, I guess, the stuff we started doing for ourselves was just a toned down version, like a smaller scale version, which is sort of, yeah. I guess, we get in, got into sort of the duplex villa sort of stuff yeah. um, to sort of bring that high end residential into that. Into a villa, um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good. That's a really good point there. And what about in terms of what what do you like? As in, like, you know, founder of MacTech, what are you looking for, or what do you see the best builds? all have like is there any is there any key things that all the best builds that you feel have um i just feel like i mean there's so much stuff out there at the moment too um but i, I just feel like you know functionality of a house is a big one for people yeah, good point. um you know you can slap all the best looking stuff in there but if it's got no functionality like it's walking through a house nowadays is just you know you can really see that functionality of a house mm. um um, but you know, it also has to have those key, um, design features. Yes. Um, and you know, and, it, and I just, I just don't think it needs to have much, but as long as it's got a few and, you know, materials are kind of, you know, throughout the house, everything sort of ties in together. Mm. Um, but you know, it's, it's getting more and more full on, you know, I think social media has got a massive, has had a massive impact on yeah. that. Um, you know, from when I first started to now, everyone's seeing everything everyone's doing. So it's like, I want that, but better. You know what I mean? Mm. So everyone's just trying to do better than everyone. And it's just, yeah, it's just elevating it so quickly. Mm, that's a really good point. So key things I took away there from some of the best builds, MacTech's mouth functionality <laughs> is obviously the number one, like you said that kind of straight away. And then adding some key features within the, within the home. So what's some key features? Like what, what would be your top three key features? Say budgets out of it to add into a, uh, into a, you know, high performing build. Um, I mean, I guess everyone's got a, got a lot of different requirements for what, you know, they envisage, yeah. you know, and a lot of the stuff we do is very personal, yeah. um, to suit the client. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, if we were talking about stuff that we create for, to say to, for the market, yeah. I guess, yeah. um, you know, it's just stuff that's, um, I get. I guess what we try and create is stuff that you know, it's unique. So it's not like down the road. You know, you, they yeah. can't go. Oh, I'll just go do that down the road, or you know, there's something yeah. like that that I can just buy down the road or whatever. So you know, it's kind of, um, you know, I guess things that we've been doing lately is you know, glass edge and floored pools because you know it's just yes. it's a new thing. There's not many around. It's you know, sort of a wow feature. It's just creating a few wow features around. Um, you know, creating. Pl um, greenery through you know through the internal of the house yeah. just to soften things down yes that's a good one um uh you know a, a lot of things now is you know sort of like gym and wellness retreat stuff like in your own home just i guess sort of the whole covid sort of changed things to creating you know everything in your house where you don't now pretty much you don't have to leave don't the house leave. yeah, yeah. Um, really lo i love that that's that's three really key ones there bit of wow fact that's something that can't be easily replaced yeah. or copied I, yeah. I like that second was greenery internally i've noticed that hey like yeah. heaps of doing the little what do you call that the little drop down like greenery. yeah there's different types yeah like hanging hanging, hanging stuff yeah, but yeah the, there's different types you can get but yeah yeah no, I've, I've really noticed that in some of the the builds that are getting really high quality finishes or, or good reputation they've got some greenery inside and then third i've noticed that too yeah look wellness including some yeah. sort of wellness internally a lot more people are prioritizing their health and well-being yeah i mean you're seeing the skyrocket of wellness centers around australia yeah a lot of people are actually putting them within the, the house now so yeah. yeah that's a really really good point mate what about in terms of what's your what's what's popping uh, one thing i noticed with all your designs or, or builds or the clients you take i don't know whether this is you having input in design or not but what do you feel is popping 2023? You always seem to be ahead of the trend. Oh, uh, I don't know. I guess it's getting to the point where like stuff's not lasting too long in the way of before it's everywhere. I mean, and once mm. we get back to the social media, it's sort yeah. of, so it's always finding that new thing that, you know, I mean, and everything's coming back around, you know, in circles as well. Um, probably just done a bit different or better. Um, oh, I guess, I guess it's getting to the point where there's not much that can change things, you know, th there's not much new things that can be added. It's more just tweaking things and, you know, twisting things around to make it different. Mm. Um, you know, there's so many different styles and everything that, that, you know, you can use. Um, 
but to, I, I guess, yeah, put a twist on the late, you know, do something with the latest. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that, it's, yeah it's just depending just, on the, yeah. 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 It's, uh, there's just, there's just so much you can go into it. When you, um, when you said br- things full circling around, are you talking around like trends and then it, yeah, you twist? Yeah, like, so you know, like, like, like arches. arches. Like everyone was yeah. cutting arches out of the house before, yes. you know what I mean, to make square. Now arches are going in. It's just, yeah, just those sorts of things. But it's, I guess it's about probably finding the more timeless yes. styles. Yes. You know what I mean? Just because, you, know, um, you know, it's all great and well to put all the new trends in, but, you know, the – once again, back to the social media thing, they come and go so quick because then mm. someone else starts putting something else in. They're like, oh, I like that now. Yeah, you know what I mean? So everyone true. starts doing it. Um, but I feel like, you know, pro- probably the latest thing is like sort of the organic, earthy, natural sort of feel, yes. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, not- I've noticed a bit of that, eh? And even the the tones of brown and um, I've seen a few of them, like yeah. that, that, that sort of, I don't know, oaky kind of, with look, then with a bit of greenery yeah. inside mm-hmm. and your beiges, I noticed that a fair bit. Um, what again? There's no real um, right or wrong answer, but for you, what are you like in your own designs? Is there like a do you stick to do you go off like what you're feeling at the time, or will you think market? I'm going to sell this. I need to attract the market, or do you just go um, with your heart? I guess I guess a bit of both, like. Like everything we do personally, we, I guess, try and create it as though we're going to live there. We're going to stay there. If the market yep. turns, we'd be happy to live there. Yep. Um, you know, I guess if you can sort of create it, you know, with heart, other people are going to see that, you know, mm. to sell, like, you know, yep. in, when you put it to market. True. Um, I guess though, in saying that, you know, it seems like the stuff that's really on trend you're going to get a better price for at the time too, rather than something that's timeless. You know what I mean? Mm. But um, it depends, you know, if it's, you're going to hang on for it for a while, but I guess most of the stuff we do, you know, it's selling, you know, pretty quick. So we try and, I guess, suit the market, you know, do it to suit the market at the time. Mm. Um, but also, you know, n- try and avoid, you know, the red hot trends that are, you can tell are just, they're there for they're the there six for months, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and, and that's it. But it's just also wanting to sort of, I guess, I guess, like you say, try and find the next sort of thing and just incorporating a little bit of something in there. But mm. I was going to ask Nick, with client work, what do you feel are, are one or two of the key things that are on request from a lot of the clients at the moment for the builds? Is there anything that's really standing out people are requesting? Um, it's so all over the place. Like, it, like just, yeah, once again, personal preference mm. of just, but, you know, I think, I think ceiling heights are a big thing yeah, at the good moment. Point. Um, really good point. You know, it's just Massive. everything just, you know, a 2.4 ceiling used to be a standard ceiling and you would never do a 2.4 ceiling now for anyone. You know what I mean? Great it's kind of like, it's, and, and everyone just keeps getting, you know, taller and taller um, ceilings. Um, uh, I guess, I guess probably the most requested is, you know, simplistic open plan living. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I can I can guarantee that that was really good. I was interested to hear what what your take was because anyone who's doing a reno at the moment or going to do a project to flip or sell or whatever, I'm always so big on what what are the buyers want and yep. like what's you know what what do they want and hearing that on what some of the clients are wanting. You got to think buyers are kind of the client they buy something and then they want to make it their own. So it, that's the very good one. I, I haven't really mentioned that one, but high ceilings, mm. yes, hundred percent, like. We're obviously a buyer's agency, work with a, a lot of buyers, southeast Queensland uh, on the Gold Coast and high ceilings is actually, yeah, now that you said it, yeah. very, very highly requested. Yeah. And things with low ceilings, they will rule it out. Even yeah. if the finishes, floor plan's immaculate, oh, Matt, those low ceilings, what were they yeah. thinking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. literally. Yeah. That's a really and good And back point. to the functionality. Functionality, you know, People yeah. walking through and just feeling like, you know, it can be a... 200 square meter home, but if it's got, you know, three and a half meter ceilings, they're yeah. like, wow, this is a good yeah. size home. Mate, in terms of the dwelling, now what about location? Is there anything you look at in particular? Like this is more for your own. Oh. If you were to, anything you look at from a location point of view that you oh. feel is important? I just feel like anything, like if we're talking Gold Coast, you know, for us, I guess it's sort of anything east of the Gold Coast Highway. Mm. It's just sort of, you know, it just feels, it feels like, you know, it's, 
it's just so sparse there, you know, to keep to get yes, anything to there get at the something. moment. You know, yeah. if you can get something there and create something epic, you know, you'll get definitely it's that high, high value. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For it. yeah, yeah. Anything else with locations, you think? Um I just I just think, you know, not like say for Palm Beach, you know, not too close right in the hub, but you know, just out, but still walking, you know, um, um Palm Beach once again, you know, coming up with epic cafes mm. and restaurants and everything. Um, you know, Miami Mermaid. Um, just anything sort of, I guess, the closer to the beach the better. If yeah, you can if you incorporate so. ocean views, even yeah, if, if it's just some a glimpse. Sort of aspect, eh? yeah. yeah. That is a big um, one. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. I had I did a um post a while ago around what's what's popping at the moment, I think. And view corridor or aspect is yeah. a is huge one. Yeah, you're right. Even if it's like a little bit of blue glimpse yeah. from like the rooftop. Yeah. Um, that that does add yeah. add some value. One thing I heard there as well is is obviously blue chip. Gold Coast is a really good example of a land bank city. And what you said there was as close to the beach. You've seen it in eastern suburbs of um, Sydney as well. Like yeah. they stay blue chip their yeah. time because you can't build more supply east. Yeah. So and, and it's those lifestyle factors. So you heard it there first. It's it, location does a lot of the the lifting. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. If you if you did one of your designs you know and probably an inferior location it, it would affect the price would it not yeah 100 yeah. percent. like you know like because you know we obviously to get the the high-end quality build that we try and get yeah if we spend that same amount in a, you know yes. further west we're not going to get the sale price we need 100 percent. that's that's a big one that's exactly taps on why location will always do 80 percent of the heavy mm. heavy lifting and then if you combine that with a really good product with demand and functionality i think you've kind of put it all together on what what the key yeah. key is really i think sorry probably one other thing is probably acreage you know mm. but that's close to the ocean yeah i mean you know that's something that we've got in the pipeline at the moment is yeah something with you know decent acreage mm. and it's just you know it's still you know on the gold coast it's you know 15 minutes to the beach crazy, still. Yeah, yeah. but it's just you know i think that everyone's gonna want to like they're either gonna want to be on or close to the beach, mm -hmm. or have acreage. Or well, acreage, yeah. yeah. I'm not. There's some bangers, eh? In the yeah. Eight, and some and of there's the, just not much out there at the moment. Yes. You know, like like the, I feel like the acreage stuff is lagging behind the coastal stuff. Yep. You know, yep. with 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 really good quality stuff. Mm. It's a really good insight as well, and I can back that up for sure. That a lot more people, I think, since COVID as well, are experimenting with life of privacy. Yeah. Neighbors far away. Uh, they're, they're working from home, you know, they've got the kids and there's a lot of space, things like that. Obviously still close to the beach, but I, I'm definitely noticing that like people are spending big money for acreage Yeah, and I think it's going to be some, is that some Mac tech? You'll be seeing a few Mac tech boards out, out in the, <sighs> the valleys, you reckon? Uh, yeah. Me and my brother actually got a really epic one. Some coming. Pipeline, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, mate, as we finish off, just give me an idea. So, Queensland House of the Year and then Australian Villa of the Year. Um, was the house was that that Riviera one? Yeah, 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 mate. If you, people, if you haven't seen Riviera, just type Mac Tech Riviera. I, I'd assume. Yeah. What What do you think? I, it's mate. I see it at the beach. I walk past. I'm like, that's that is my dream house. I, I just absolutely love the minimalist like yeah. functionality. What do you think made that house so good? What was it? I think, like you said, the minimalist, you know, it's, it's the off form finish, um, you know, which is a really hard finish to achieve. What's that? Sorry. The off form finish, What's the concrete, mean? the off form oh, concrete. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess, you know, it's a Joe Adset design. Um, you know, so it was kind of, it was, it was, you walk in and you don't see services anywhere. Like it's also raw, um, mm. you know, and all you see is concrete and timber and ocean and you just, you know, you, you kind of, you don't know where. Like, you know, you can't see aircon, you can't see anything mm. that's in there, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's sort of got everything that, you, that any house has, but yeah, it's just... You can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting, eh? How that's kind of... In, like, that's popular, yeah? Like, yeah. the whole minimalist. Like, I noticed yeah. on a lot of your design, like, even the garret, like, you can't even see the, the slits in the garret. Like, it's just like a... Yeah. It looks like it's actually... Just a wall. Just a wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that kind of on... Yeah. on yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much creating spaces... That don't look like the spaces they're meant to be. Yeah, yeah. that is very popular. That again relates to Villa. Of the, what what's that one called? The Villa of the Year. The one at Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Villa it, does of that the have year. a name or anything? Nah, no. it's just so, um, 
Jefferson yeah. Lane, Mac Tech. Check yeah. it out. So really cool design. That was the one that had the little um, sort of pool. Yeah, uh, glass edge pool on the glass top. Edge. And, yeah. I, I like how you did that one. So what do you think it was with – with the villa, like obviously a bit different mindset from a house to a villa. What, what yeah. did you try to create with the villa? Um, I guess like all the s- stuff we do, we work with Jason Pate for our own stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, we sort of p- worked pretty close with that to, I guess, I guess it was sort of creating something that um, like townhouses and villas have come so far in the last few yep. years. It's kind of townhouse and villa. It was just kind of like, you know, yeah, yuck. It was, you know secondary, what I mean? hey. it was like, yeah. 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 Um, but I just feel like, you know, a lot of them now are becoming just a, a smaller version of a house, you know what I mean? And, and people aren't dismissing them because they're a duplex or a villa. Mm. Um, so our biggest goal for that one was purely just to, I guess, bring all the high-end big residential stuff we do and just compact it into a, you know, into a villa. Mm. Um, once again, key features, um, you know, walk, walking to the entrance, you walk under the pool and there's a glass floor, you look into the pool, cool. lots of hanging greenery. Yeah. Um, I think that one was a big one. Um, of the use of space as well. Um, it was only a 10 meter wide block. I was going to say, it's not a big, it wasn't a big block. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, what we, what we could, what we fitted in there too. Um, once again, back to functionality, yeah. um, you know, there was four cars, a gym, a, um, uh, you know, sauna, cinema room, four bedroom. Um, you know, there Jesus. was, there was, uh, you know, it was three meter ceilings. The, the top level was, um, you know, three meter to four and a half meter rake ceilings. Um, so it was just like a lot to fit in that yeah, sort of little space. But when you're in there, not feeling like it's it's crammed. crammed yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. Like what I'm hearing there is, and this is feedback I get from a lot of buyers as well, is the house itself doesn't feel like the block size. So yeah. it's like knowing what you're working with yeah. and trying to create create something there. And mate, just to finish on, like I know it's like asking who's your favourite child, but mate, <laughs> is, there, is there a build that – you still put up there, like you just, you look at it or you still think about it late at night? Um, I guess once again, like everything keeps growing. It's kind of like at the time, it's like, oh, that's my favorite build. But then as soon as you get the next one, you're like, oh, that's my favorite build. Mm. And, you know, then you've got something in the pipeline that's, you know, like, oh, that's going to be so epic. Mm. Um, uh, or is there any of that, like the journey to it as well was tough or something? You you got it done. You're really proud of it. Um I mean, I, 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 like you said, mentioned Riviera before, uh, you know, that was one that there was so much time and effort, you know, it's not that, like yeah. you, you build a wall and, and if someone hits it or it's, it doesn't come out right, you just patch it up and fix it. Yep. It was like, you know, pouring concrete walls, it's like what you do is what you get. So there's so much stress and, and you know, the, the, the form work stays on the wall for two weeks. So you have no idea what's behind that wall till you strip it off mm-hmm. and whatever you strip and whatever you see, that's it. That's, that's done. It. Yeah. So I think that one, you know, was probably the, the most, um, time and effort we've put into achieving the finish. Yep. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think, I think majority of the builds it's, yeah, everything's just so unique and different and everything's mm-hmm. got its own little thing. Load of touch, eh? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm curious to ask, mate, as we, as we just finished, but just one add value. What do you think the space is in a house at the moment that people, like a lot of people listening now are trying to get into what you're doing full time and they're doing the reno. Like we buy a lot for clients doing the flip and sell. Yeah. So we're doing site acquisition for them, like blue yeah. chip. What would be some advice to them on the spaces in the house to not skimp on? I think, um, like obviously main main living and master bedrooms yeah. are the are the are the biggest. Yeah. Like that's where we put the most, you know, so sorry, front facade yep. of the house. Yes. Good um point. main uh main living area yep. and master bedroom. You know, nice. spare bedrooms and everything, it's kinda like, you know, no one really cares. It's kinda mm-hmm. like as long as it looks half decent. Um, but yeah, as long as the money goes into those key areas, I think that's the Love the that thing. key takeaway there. Top three from MacTech, front facade. <laughs> Agree with that hundred. Um, kitchen, did you say? Oh uh, yeah, living it. Living, living li- kitchen. Li- yeah, ki- kitchen, and dining, then master, living, and then the master. Yeah, yeah big time. Hey, everyone, yeah. everyone goes straight to the master. Hey, eh? get yeah. the get the suss of it. Cool man, mate. That's um that's unreal. As we lastly, mate, I just want to ask you. I guess it still it blows my mind. Like you're over a decade in in business. I know what it takes to do well in business, and mate, it's it's tough going, and especially someone who's. It was bumming it. Uh, <laughs> mate, what 
for anyone out there in the business, but like, what what do you put it down to? Like, I mean, anyone, most people fail in business after one year, as you know. Mm. Like, how does a bum <laughs> drop out of school, have a successful business more than a decade? I think you've just got to enjoy what you do. Um, you know, like when I was starting, I was just I was living and breathing it. I was like, yeah, this is you really seemed fun. like you loved it, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think if you've got that and you've got the drive to do it, um, like it's yeah, it's pretty simple really yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. pretty <laughs> it's not that yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 you know i just i just figure anyone anyone can do it if someone wants to do it they that will do it you mm-hmm. know if you, you just throw yourself in the deep end and you'll just like make it work <laughs> mate it goes back to your grom day say hey, the big waves coming hey? you just, <laughs> yeah. just got to commit eh? just deal with it when it's happening you do <laughs> <laughs> oh mate how good mate i just want to acknowledge you I, I love doing raw interviews because um Mate, I, I didn't know any of that. That's cool. Yeah. And, and mate, I'm thinking something the title, like high school dropout. You don't mind if I throw that in there? Because, mate, that's, sure. that's unreal, man. I, I love it because, again, you're, you're extra. I don't know if you know it or not. Like, you're a humble dude, but, man, like very reputable in the in the Gold Coast world, 100%. Like, Thanks. in terms of your, your product, um, your reputation, brand. You obviously – it's cool branding and stuff on social media. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but really owning – similar one of our previous guests we've had, like Greya. Yep. Like they treat marketing big time, like a yeah. portfolio, right? It's a massive – it's been a massive thing for us, I think. You know, yeah. just it's just brand – purely for brand awareness. Brand awareness. You know, and just – and, you know, I feel like we've probably got some jobs from Instagram, you know what I mean? But yeah. it might not be a case of they see something like, oh, we'll use them. It just might be a case of even if we've tended jobs, they'll look at us and they'll, yeah. and they'll, they'll feel like – they know you, you know what I mean? They feel yep. comfortable with you. And if, if the other guys don't have anything, it's kind of like, oh, we've they've got a connection 100%. already. Yeah, I love that. So any tradies out there who aren't doing it at the moment, advice is, yeah. 100%. Get, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Just brand awareness and for clients to feel comfortable that, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. Yeah. And show, show it's like you, it's like an art gallery now, hey? Like yeah, really, much. it's a digital <laughs> digital portfolio. Yeah, exactly. Like 100%, 100%. So yeah, mate, just want to acknowledge you because that's an epic story. And I know that, mate, this story is going to, I know it's going to inspire um, some males and females, but especially some tradies out there. I know, like, I know heaps who have been where you were yeah. as well. And to show them that, hey, having a purpose, make passion your paycheck, Yeah, you know, and, and, Mate, I, I love what you just to top it off. Like, mate, you got nothing to lose, eh? Yeah. Like, at the end, like, like, just commit, man. Just do it. Waves coming, bro. Like, just, <laughs> just hop on. It. Deal with it when you're on there. <laughs> Deal with it when you're on there. Oh, man. We always finish with a, uh, a fast five. So, um, mate, first thing that comes to mind, any um, any location, any dwelling type. Um, and we'll even throw in the little MacTech spin here. <laughs> so, this is a, all of these are MacTech builds as well. So, yeah, right. So, yeah. mate, the first one's um, holiday home. Anywhere in the world. Um, where would that be? Oh. Where would you get the Mac Tech crew out? Um, for if I wanted a holiday house? Yeah, just a sick holiday home. Slapped straight on Tavarua in Fiji. Oh, Fiji. Yeah, yeah we haven't had Fiji before. Yeah. yeah. Is that that surf? It's yeah, mad it's, surf there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. What are you thinking? Like a villa or like just... Just a banger. Open. I honestly don't really care as long yeah. as it's on that island. Just <laughs> 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 oh, how yeah, good. Um, you've been there a few times, have you? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, one of my favorites. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, mate, next one. What about the, uh, the Bucks party? You married? Yeah. 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 Where, where would the Bucks party be? <sighs> just a, just a party home. Oh yeah. I don't know. It's, um, not a big one for party and stuff. Maybe ask me 20, 20 year old. <laughs> I was going to say, let's ask the surfer Nick, bum. Nick, Nick, 20, 20 year old. Um, I mean, it's, it's. It's a bit cliche, but it's hard not to say Vegas, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I've never been, but it's, yeah. it'd just be one of those things, dude. Just, you know, it's a good spot. You watch yeah. a movie hangover. Bit, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be fun, yeah. <laughs> I can see a big Mac Tech villa, like penthouse maybe. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, mate, the next one is like blue chip in investment, like just a just a cash flow kind of property or where, where would you put your your dough in real estate, you reckon? Um, once again, I just think anything – Anything close to the beach, mm. um, you know, it's it's it. They can't create more spaces than what's there True. already. Supply and so demand, yeah. Eh? Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I seen a few reports post COVID that, I mean, I'll use Queensland as an example, but the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast were the highest before, and they were the only two markets that held throughout the interest rate rises. Yeah. Gold Coast mm. has gone eight months straight of just steady yeah. increases. 
And I always put it down to, I reckon COVID just changed people's mentality around lifestyle. Hey, yeah, they just, they just prioritized it yeah. a bit more. And you're right. Then you slap supply and demand imbalance. Like you can't build yeah. anything mm -hmm. where the ocean is. So mate, that's a good point. And mate, curious to know, where's, where do you think the forever home will be? Oh, um, I'm very torn between on the beach and acreage. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's um, there's just something about. I mean, you know, I've always grown up at Crown Valley, and um, and there's just something about having space and no one around, and yeah, mm. it's um, yeah. So I mean, I guess, I guess the forever home is going to be down the track, and by then, you know, I'll probably be sick of everyone on top of each other. So you know, it's probably for me. It's going to say it's pro probably a banger on a hill that you can see the ocean, maybe. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, eh? why not? Acreage, yeah, yeah. Overlo overlooking the ocean. Overlooking the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, well, Nick, mate, really appreciate your your time. Where can people check out some of your portfolio stuff? Um, probably just Instagram. Yeah. Is Ma that Mac Tech? Eh? Yeah, yeah, Mac Tech Constructions. Yeah um it's yeah got all our latest stuff on there it's yeah mm. yeah it's all popping it's looking cool and hopefully today's app will inspire which I, I know it will but also um just the show man it, it's everyday people just just having a crack so yeah. mate it's a real credit you your works um, i love your work personally it's really Thanks. really mm. good and i'm um, really excited to see what what's coming too i always yeah. notice mm. each time you're stepping it up and you're evolving and, and yeah. whatnot mm. so mate keen to see the journey but mate thanks for making the time no worries. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks, All mate. Right, cheers. See ya.